This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Autobiography of Madame Kion by Jean Kion. Volume 2, Chapter 3. As soon as it was known in France that I was gone there, was a general outcry. Father Lamanth wrote to me that all persons of learning and of piety united in censuring me. To alarm me still more, he informed me that my mother-in-law, with whom I had entrusted my younger son and my children's substance, was fallen into a state of childhood. This, however, was false. I answer all these fearful letters as the Spirit dictated. My answers were thought very just, and those violent explanations were soon changed into applauses. Father Lamont appeared to change his censures into esteem, but it did not last. Half interest threw him back again being disappointed in his hopes of a pension which he expected i would have settled on him sister garnier whatever was her reason changed and declared against me i both ate and slept little the food which was given us was putrid and full of worms by reason of the great heat of the weather also being kept too long. What I should have formerly beheld with the greatest abhorrence now became my only nourishment. Yet everything was rendered easy to me. In God I found without increase everything which I had lost for Him. That spirit which I once thought I had lost, in a strange stupidity, was restored to me with inconceivable advantages. I was astonished at myself. I found there was nothing which I was not fit for, or in which I did not succeed. Those who observed said that I had a prodigious capacity. I knew well that I had but meager capabilities, but that in God my spirit had received a quality which it had never had before. I thought I experienced something of the state which the apostles were in after they had received the Holy Ghost. I knew, I comprehended, I understood. I was enabled to do everything necessary. I had every sort of good thing and no want of anything. When Jesus Christ, the eternal wisdom, is formed in the soul after the death of the first Adam, it finds in him all good things communicated to it. Some time after my arrival at Gex, the Bishop of Geneva came to see us. He was so clearly convinced and so much affected that he could not forbear expressing it. He opened his heart to me on what God had required of him. He confessed to me his own deviations and infidelities. Every time I spoke to him, he entered into what I said and acknowledged it to be the truth. Indeed, it was the spirit of truth which inspired me to speak to him, without which I should be only a mere simpleton. Yet, as soon as those persons spoke to him who sought for preeminence and who could not suffer any good but what came from themselves, he was so weak as to be imposed on with impressions against the truth. This weakness has hindered him from doing all the good 
which otherwise he might have done. After I had spoken to him, he said that he had it in his mind to give me Father Lacombe for director. He was a man illuminated of God, who well understood the inward path, and had a singular gift of pacifying souls. Greatly was I rejoiced when the bishop appointed him, seeing thereby his authority united with the grace which already seemed to have given him to me by a union and infusion of supernatural life and love. The fatigues I had and watchings with my daughter threw me into a violent sickness attended with exquisite pain. The physicians judged me in danger, yet the sisters of the house quite neglected me, especially the stewardess. She was so penurious that she did not give me what was necessary to sustain life. I had not a penny to help myself with, as I had reserved nothing to myself. Besides, they received all the money which was remitted to me from France, which was very considerable. I practiced poverty and was in necessity even among those to whom I had given all. They wrote to Father Lacombe, desiring him to come to me as I was extremely ill. Hearing of my condition, he was so touched with compassion as to walk on foot all night. He traveled not otherwise, endeavoring in that, as in everything else, to imitate our Lord Jesus Christ. As soon as he entered the house, my pains abated. When he had prayed and blessed me, laying his hand on my head, I was perfectly cured to the great astonishment of my physicians, who were not willing to acknowledge the miracle. These sisters advised me to return to my daughter. Father Lacombe returned with me. A violent storm arose on the lake, which made me very sick, and seemed likely to upset the boat. But the hand of Providence remarkably appeared in our favor, so much so that it was taken notice of by the mariners and passengers. They looked upon Father Lacombe as a saint. We arrived at Tunon, where I found myself so perfectly recovered that instead of making and using the remedies I had proposed, I went into a retreat and stayed twelve days. Here I made vows of perpetual chastity, poverty, and obedience, covenanting to obey whatever I should believe to be the will of God, also to obey the church, and to honor Jesus Christ in such a manner as He pleased. At this time I found that I had the perfect chastity of love to the Lord, it being without any reserve, division, or view of interest, perfect poverty, by the total privation of everything that was mine, both inwardly and outwardly, perfect obedience to the will of the Lord, submission to the church, and honor to Jesus Christ in loving himself only, the effect of which soon appear, when by the loss of ourselves we are passed into the Lord, our will is made one and the same with that of the Lord, according to the prayer of Christ. As thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, grant that they also may be one of us. John 17 Verse 21. Oh, but it is then that the will is rendered marvelous, both because it is made the will of the Lord, 
which is the greatest of miracles, also because it works wonders in him. For as it is the Lord who wills in the soul, that will has its effect. Scarcely has it willed, but the thing is done. But some may say, Why then so many oppressions endure? Why do not these souls, if they have such a power, set themselves free from them? We answer, that if they had any will to do anything of that sort against divine providence, that would be the will of flesh, or the will of man, and not the will of God. John chapter 1 verse 13 I wrote generally at midnight, waking at the proper time. But if I wound up my alarm watch, then I used not to wake in time. I saw that the Lord had the care of a father and a spouse over me. When I had any indisposition and my body wanted to rest, he did not awake me. But at such times I felt, even in my sleep, a singular possession of him. Some years have passed wherein I have had only a kind of half sleep, but my soul waked the more for the Lord, as sleep seemed to steal from it every other attention. The Lord made it known also to many persons that He designed me for a mother of great people, but a people simple and childlike. They took these intelligences in a literal sense and thought it related to some institution or congregation. But it appeared to me that the persons whom it would please the Lord that I should win over to him and to whom I should be as a mother, through his goodness, should have the same union of affection for me as children have for a parent, but a union much deeper and stronger, giving me all that was necessary for them to bring them to walk in the way by which he would lead them, as I shall show. End of chapter 3, volume 2 of the autobiography of Madame Kion.